permission to come aboard. Jason Momoa is an American actor, model, producer, screenwriter, and entrepreneur. He is also a handsome Hawaiian man, the mighty warrior Conan, the beloved Khal Drogo, the inimitable Aquaman, and most importantly, he's both a caring family man and all around big and cheerful person. Aquaman, how Jason Momoa lives and how much he earns. Jason Momoa, full name Joseph Jason Namakia Momoa, was born in Honolulu in sunny Hawaii on August 1, 1979. He is the only child of artist Joseph and photographer Connie. The actor's father is a native Hawaiian, while his mother has Indian, German, and Irish roots. Jason's parents divorced when he was a baby. The boy stayed with his mother and moved to Iowa. From an early age, he showed off his athletic abilities and spent his free time outdoors. Growing up, he was interested in mountaineering and axe throwing. After high school, Jason enrolled in a local college where he studied marine biology. As a student, he traveled the world, studying painting in Paris and Buddhism in Tibet. But in his last year, he dropped out of school, deciding to return to the Hawaiian Islands. He was attracted to the ocean and beach life, and he also wanted to establish a connection with his father. Momoa graduated from one of Honolulu's prestigious colleges. In addition, the future actor studied wild animals at the University of Colorado. Soon he was noticed by the famous Japanese designer, Takeo Kokuchi, who invited him to come with him as a model. Jason participated in numerous photo shoots, as well as in local beauty contests, and he also worked as a salesman at a surfer store. In 1999, having won the title of Model of the Year on the island, he began his acting career. The newcomer's debut was his role as Jason Owain in the 10th and 11th seasons of the popular TV series Baywatch. It is of note that the creators of the project preferred Momoa out of the 1,300 candidates, despite the fact that he had no idea how to behave on the set. His character appeared in 40 episodes, and after the series ended, in the full-length spin-off Baywatch Hawaiian Wedding. By the way, during the filming of Baywatch, Jason met actress Simone McKinnon and started an affair. According to some information, it was she who insisted that the Hawaiian attend an acting school, which he graduated from, not really hoping for success. However, Momoa, already by 2004, appeared in the series North Shore, filled with seascapes and semi-naked models. In the same year, he played a small role in the comedy Johnson Family Vacation. The film was released on the big screen and received a lot of flattering reviews from critics and the attention of the audiences. But the real success came to the young actor a year later, when he appeared in the role of Ronan Dex in the TV series Stargate Atlantis. Hi. I heard you died and came back to life. Pretty much. There's a, a few things I still need to do. A recognizable feature of the hero's image was his thick dreadlocks, which Momoa decided to cut off for the final fifth season because his neck ached due to the heavy hairstyle. In order not to disappoint fans, a wig was made. Thanks to his participation in the project, he received offers for roles that later helped him become world famous. Meanwhile, Jason and Simone announced their engagement, but their wedding did not take place. In 2006, the couple broke up. While still in the relationship, Momoa met with the ex-wife of musician Lenny Kravitz, actress Lisa Bonet. The actor was 12 years younger than his lover. He first saw her when the series The Cosby Show was released, where Bonet played the main role. Jason was only eight, but he immediately fell in love with the show and promised himself to meet her at all costs, which happened in 2005. Their first meeting took place in one of the jazz clubs in New York. Jason and Lisa spent the whole night talking at the bar. They looked as though they had known each other all their lives. At the time of their meeting, Jason was 26 and his beloved was 38. In addition, the actress had a daughter, but the couple decided to take their time with the wedding. By the way, the lovers look very cute together. Jason with a manly, frightening, and attractive appearance, and a height of almost six foot four, and a refined petite Lisa, whose height is only five foot two. The lovers perfectly complement each other. In 2007, their daughter Lola Iolani was born, which in Hawaiian means royal hawk. 
A year later, a son was born who was given a very unusual name, Nikoa Wolf Manakoopa Namakia, and this name has meaning. The boy was born at night during a terrible thunderstorm. Nikoa means fighter, mana means willpower, kawa means rain, and po means dark. In addition, the actor is the stepfather of Lisa's daughter from her first marriage, actress and singer Zoe Kravitz, with whom they have a very warm relationship, and their pair tattoos confirm this. But not only the births of his children become important events in Momoa's life, in November 2008, during an argument in a cafe, an unknown person hit him with a broken beer mug. Jason received about 140 stitches. The traces of them became part of the famous image as an actor who almost lost his left eye. The attacker was sentenced to five years in prison. In 2010, Momoa, together with his friends, founded the production company Pride of Gypsies. And after performing a ritual dance of the New Zealand Maori tribe at the auditions, Jason convinced the producers and got into the cast of a new project from HBO, which was promised to turn out into a world-known series. And it turned out to be true. The series Game of Thrones was a real breakthrough. Jason got the role of the most noticeable character, the leader of the formidable Dothraki clan, Khal Drogo. The barbarian's wife, Princess and Khaleesi Daenerys Targaryen, was played by Amelia Clark. Anna, the Drogo, attacking. Anna Vidrikarasan. Unlike her partner, Momoa only appeared in the first season. For the sake of this role, he had to gain weight, which he did with a diet of pizza and Irish Guinness beers. After its release, the project got a cult following, and Jason Momoa in 2011 received the well-deserved award at the CinemaCon Festival in the category Rising Star. It turns out that the actor tried to stop Lisa from watching the series not only because of the love scenes with him, but he did not want her to become another fan of Game of Thrones. In the same year, a remake of the film about the legendary Conan the Barbarian was released, where the actor played the main character. You have a name? My name is Tamara Amalia Jorvi Karushan. And yours is? Conan. Conan. That's it? How many names do I need? Despite the fact that the film failed at the box office and received negative reviews, the role of Conan pushed his name to the top league of young actors in modern Hollywood. His task was not to imitate Arnold Schwarzenegger, in order to achieve the perfect appearance, in Jason's opinion, he trained a lot and dieted. Meanwhile, the harmony and idyllic life of the actor was almost undermined by journalists and envious people. During the premiere of the film Conan the Barbarian, he was kissed by the star of the series Charmed, Rose McGowan. The picture spread all over the internet and gave rise to rumors about the impending divorce of Momoa and Bonet. And one after another, articles appeared in the press pitying the unhappy wife who turns a blind eye to her husband's systematic infidelities. But despite the rumors, the couple stayed together. Despite the success of Game of Thrones and a good income, after the end of filming, Jason was out of work for several years. He accumulated unpaid bills and his debts multiplied, and his family, as the actor himself admitted, even had to star for a while. In 2012, Momoa appeared as a murderer in the film Bullet to the Head. The main role in the film was played by the legendary Sylvester Stallone. I said I was gonna kill you. Yeah. It's kind of fun, isn't it? Just you and me, two professionals. Only one gets away. The actor managed to replenish his family's budget and partially deal with debts in 2014. After the release of the film Road to Paloma, he not only played one of the main roles, but also wrote the script for the film and acted as a director and producer. One of the main roles was played by Lisa Bonet. Meanwhile, the star had several more roles, and while they did not bring him large amounts of money, they kept the family from sliding into financial issues again. The next movie is the action movie Wolves, where the actor played a werewolf and the fantastic horror movie Debug. In this film, Momoa played an employee of the space station struck by a virtual virus. In 2016, Jason played a cannibal who fell in love with his victim in the post-apocalyptic drama The Bad Batch. The film received a special jury prize at the Venice Film Festival. In October of the same year, the world premiere of the comedy thriller Once Upon a Time in Venice took place, in which the actor also played a key role. Hey, look who it is. What's up, Charles? Where's my shit? Yeah, where's your shit? A real success for Momoa, 
turned out to be a collaboration with the DC Comics film universe, thanks to which the actor tried on the image of the superhero Aquaman, who commands water and marine life with a magic trident. For the first time in this role, he appeared before the audience in the movie Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice. In August 2016, the Guinness Brewing Company began to produce a new product named after Momoa, Mano Brew, which the actor happily announced on Instagram. At the same time, he starred in the title role of the historical television series Frontier, about the rivalry of the British Hudson's Bay Company with French and American fur traders at the end of the 18th century and also appeared on the screen as Aquaman again. So in November 2017, fans of DC Comics were able to see the collaboration between famous superheroes, Justice League. You got no powers, no offense. This guy might be working for the enemy, we don't know. You're tripping over your feet and mine. Oof, you're gorgeous. Participation in the film earned Momoa $4 million, but the project became a box office failure and received mixed reviews from critics and viewers, which forced the company to reconsider plans for future projects. Meanwhile, Jason and Lisa have reconsidered their relationship and sealed their marriage bonds. The ceremony was held in Topanga, California. The chamber wedding was attended only by close people. Among them were Bonet's daughter from her first marriage, Zoe, actress Elisa Vikander and Michael Fassbender. Curiously, Zoe and Michael once had an affair, but they remained just friends. The newlyweds informed the world about the important event only a few months later, noting that the wedding was just another reason for them to get together with family and friends, and they felt like husband and wife for a long time. In her interviews, Lisa calls her husband a generous leader, which according to her, gives him a rare form of masculinity. It is known that the actor thoroughly prepares for each role. He studied various martial arts techniques before appearing as Conan the Barbarian and Aquaman. And after the wedding, he started practicing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. In 2018, the actor appeared in all his glory in the main role in the film Aquaman, based on the comic book series of the same name by writer and screenwriter Jeff Jones. Hey buddy, you that fish boy from the TV? Oh, great. In addition to Momoa, Matt Damon and Simon Baker auditioned for the role of Aquaman. At the premiere, Jason, along with his children and crew members, performed his favorite ritual dance, which had previously brought him success with Game of Thrones. Impressive graphics simulating the underwater world, large-scale battles, and of course, Momoa's acting, menacingly waving his trident, made the film a cinematic event of the season. The film also included stars like Dolph Lundgren, William Dafoe, Nicole Kidman, Patrick Wilson, and Amber Heard embodied the image of Aquaman's beloved. And although most of the filming did not take place underwater, the conditions couldn't be called simple. They were suspended in the air, and a huge fan blew into their faces. The project turned out to be so successful that it surpassed the 1.14 billion mark at the box office, becoming the most profitable in the DC universe, while the actor himself received an impressive payout of $14 million. Also in 2018, Jason Momoa was awarded the title of the most beautiful man according to the T.C. Candler Internet Portal. Another successful step in the actor's filmography was his work in the Canadian action movie Braven. Momoa's character is a lumberjack who has to engage in an unequal battle with a clan of drug dealers. In the same year, he had the honor to announce the winner at the Academy Award ceremony in the nomination Best Supporting Female Role. Jason went on the stage with Helen Mirren, the actor appeared in a pink suit made of delicate velour, and he had a matching hairband on his arm. Thanks to this image, he was named the most stylish man of the event. In 2019, Momoa joined the cast of the sci-fi series for the Apple TV Plus video service C. The plot tells about people who have lost their sight, whose life changes when twins appear in the tribe who can see. Jason plays a tribal leader living on an isolated mountaintop. How can he? This is our home. We are one, and we fight as one. Prepare for battle. The actor approached his role with great responsibility, working closely with the project coordinator, who is blind from birth, who is responsible for the correct representation of blind people on the screen. In order to experience the life of a man who sees nothing, 
The actor lived in a sleep mask for several weeks. He was paid $600,000 for the first episode alone. Jason has a good sense of humor. He even wanted to become a comedian on Saturday Night Live, which he admitted in the opening monologue to the show. The actor was prevented from becoming a comedian by his busy career, although he still played in several sketches. For example, Momoa as an elf who reports to Santa about the bad behavior of a 13-year-old boy. Before each role requiring impressive musculature, Momoa goes on a diet with a lot of protein, reducing carbohydrate intake. The only thing the actor can't do without is his favorite beer. However, in the summer of 2019, after seeing a picture of Jason on the beach, many were upset by how his figure differs from the screen image. But a lot of fans noted that they liked Momoa, who gained weight without extra abs even more. In 2019, Jason took the part in the promotion of the new album Ordinary Man by Ozzy Osbourne, appearing in the teaser of the song Scary Little Green Men, and voiced Aquaman in the animation project The Lego Movie 2. Fans who were surprised by the actor's published video, where he shaves off his famous beard, also know him as an environmentalist. In this way, Jason decided to draw attention to the problem of plastic and remind people of the importance of proper disposal of garbage. During the same period, the actor joined the Hawaiian protesters who opposed the installation of a 100-foot telescope on Mount Mauna Kea, which they consider sacred. Scientists wanted to install a $1.4 billion device to use it to study distant galaxies. At the same time, the Australian editorial board of GQ magazine awarded Jason Momoa the title of Person of the Year, which was a real surprise for the Hollywood actor. In social media, the artist said he hoped that the award went to him, not only for his film roles, but also for his environmental activism. In February 2020, Momoa appeared in one of the most notable advertisements at the Super Bowl. In the project by Rocket Mortgage, which promotes mortgage services, the actor appeared in a rather unusual way, losing a solid part of his hair and muscles. Also in the video, Jason's wife appears, who helps her skinny husband put a barbell on the rack. By the way, in the video about how the ad was shot, which can be found on Jason's Instagram, it is clear that Lisa can't hold back her laughter looking at her balding husband. Momo is an avid fan of all kinds of heavy music, in an interview, he admitted that some heavy metal songs inspire him to create his characters. One of the actor's favorite groups is Arch Spire, whose members, at his invitation, played cameo roles in the TV series C, and Momoa himself, with vocalist Ali Peters, practiced the correct screaming technique for an important scene there. In addition, Jason can play guitar, ukulele, and drums. On his last birthday, the star was presented with a custom bass guitar Fender Precision. The actor's children also show interest in musical instruments. In 2021, another story about superheroes from the DC Comics universe was added to Momoa's filmography. Zack Snyder's Justice League. In the film, the characters played by Momoa, Ben Affleck, Ray Fisher, Henry Cavill, confront the invasion by Steppenwolf and his army of parademons. Don't count on a Batman. Why not? It's not like you coming here digging into my business, getting into my life. People from Atlanta tell me to do this, now you say do that. I want to be left alone. The actor also appeared in the role of gunsmith Duncan Idaho in the next film adaptation of the novel Dune by Frank Herbert. Me hey, you. Found some muscle? I did? A little earlier, the premiere of the movie Sweet Girl took place on Netflix, where Jason played the main role. According to critics, the picture is full of cliches, and the plot itself is quite generic. In 2023, the premiere of the film Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom is scheduled, and the actor will also take part in the thriller Fast X. When he's not at work, Momoa likes to draw. He doesn't use email and doesn't like talking on the phone. Nevertheless, Jason gets along with technology. Despite the fact that his life is connected with the film industry, Momoa does not like to watch films and prefers reading. He is especially fascinated by Japanese poetry and the work of Charles Baudelaire. The actor also devotes a lot of time to training, which he has a personal instructor for. Momoa has several tattoos on his body that have a special meaning for him. On the actor's chest, there is a tattoo with the names of his children, which are written in their handwriting. The name of a deceased friend is imprinted on his finger. The traditional Hawaiian triangles on the hand are also of considerable value for the celebrity. They are made in the form of shark's teeth and are a talisman for Jason, who is a Buddhist and often visits Tibet. 
where he receives spiritual knowledge. In his free time, he goes hiking, kayaking, and motorcycle riding. He also enjoys archery, throwing knives and axes, roller skating, snowboarding, and cycling. Unfortunately, in January 2022, Jason Momoa and Lisa Bonet announced their divorce. Now the actor's fortune totals $10 million. Before the divorce, he lived in a huge estate in the suburbs of Los Angeles worth $3.5 million. The area of land in which the estate is located is five acres and belongs to Jason's wife. She bought it back in 1995 and arranged it to her taste. Pets also live there, two half-wolves and a donkey named Freya. Jason is fond of collecting guitars, motorcycles, and cars. He has a Harley Davidson Softail Slim, a BMW R9T Scrambler, a glamorous 1957 Harley Davidson FLH, and an old custom bike. In addition to motorcycles, the actor has a Range Rover and a Land Rover Defender, a charming pink 1955 Cadillac nicknamed Bernadette, a Ford F-150, and a whole park full of earth roamer bikes. If you follow the life of Jason Momoa, you probably have noticed that he is really fond of the color baby pink. Momoa explains this by saying that pink lowers testosterone and soothes him. He has many different things of this color, which the star often wears not only in public, but also in everyday life. We must say that he's maniacally entrepreneurial. It seems that the actor starts a business literally once every two weeks. At the moment, Momo is engaged in something with biodegradable beach shoes and sunglasses, nylon surf pants, pink boots and climbing bags, hiking backpacks, handmade knives, leather bags made of old things, belts, and reusable water bottles. What do you think is the reason behind Jason Momoa's success? Antonio Banderas, where is the main macho man of Hollywood now? The real name of the actor is Jose Antonio Dominguez Bandera. He was born on August 10, 1960, in the city of Malaga, located in the south of Spain. His father, Jose Dominguez Prito, was an officer in the Spanish Civil Guard, and his mother, Ana Bandera Gallego, worked as a school teacher. The actor has a younger brother, Francisco Javier. Young Antonio didn't show much interest in studying. He was fond of soccer and planned to become a professional athlete. However, due to a broken leg, the young man had to give up his dream. At the age of 14, Antonio and his friends attended a theatrical production of Hair, the story of lovers, which unfolds during the Vietnam War and the active development of the hippie movement, struck Antonio to the very heart. He decided to try acting on the stage. Antonio began his studies and became a member of the City Theatre Group. It should be noted that the actor used the stage name Antonio Abascal at first, and then he took his mother's surname as a stage name, adding the letter S at the end. Antonio showed remarkable zeal in acting, but almost no one actually took his passion seriously. When the future actor was 16 years old, he entered the School of Dramatic Art in Malaga and joined one of the city's theater groups. After graduating from the school, Antonio went to Madrid to develop as an actor. There, the young man worked as a waiter, a loader, and even as a model until he achieved inclusion in the troupe of the National Theater. During the same period, Antonio took part in the cultural movement La Mavida Madrilena, which translates as the Madrid Movement. He took part in its experimental productions and performances, Banderas was noticed by one of the brightest representatives of this movement, Pedro Almodovar, who invited him to star in his movie, Labyrinth of Passion. The young actor got the role of the Islamic radical who was in love with a homosexual Muslim prince. By the way, Antonio's first fee was about 100,000 pesetas. Cooperation with the director gave an impetus to the development of Banderas' career. He began to actively appear in a large number of Spanish movies. In 1985, another impetus to Bandera's career was given by Almavarar's picture, Matador. He plays a young, simple-minded boy who takes responsibility for the murders committed by his mentor. The director doesn't personally consider this movie particularly successful. He was keener on working on the film Law of Desire, in which Bandera's played one of the key roles. The collaboration between the actor and the director continued on the set of the movie, Women on the Verge of a Nervous Breakdown. Antonio continued to work with other directors, not only with Almavador. During this period, many films were released with his participation. The charming young actor was very popular among women. 
In 1987, he married the Spanish actress Ana Lessa, whom he met in a restaurant near the theater. Banderas fell deeply in love, and the couple soon got married. By the way, Pedro Almodovar was the best man at the wedding. Soon, Ana gave up her career and devoted herself to her husband. She picked his wardrobe, made the casting schedule, and monitored his diet. Unfortunately, the relationship between Antonio and Pedro Almodovar was deteriorating for a long 19 years. The reason for this was the actor's refusal to participate in the filming of Kika. Banderas at this time took aim at Hollywood. His first American movie was the musical drama *The Mambo Kings*, where he played one of the main roles. For the sake of this picture, the actor put a lot of effort into practicing pronunciation with an English tutor. He spent six months filming in the U.S. and fell in love with this country. All of Banderas' successes at home remained at home. Antonio had to conquer the audience anew. Even though the Kings of Mambo didn't quite meet the expectations of the producers, the Spanish Macho Man was still noticed. In 1993, Antonio appeared in the melodrama *The House of Spirits* and in the drama *Philadelphia* with Tom Hanks and Denzel Washington. What's the matter with you tonight? Close the notebook. You just, eh? This picture was highly acclaimed by the critics and viewers, and for Banderas, it became a lucky ticket to Hollywood. In 1994, Banderas starred in the drama *Of Love and Shadows*. And played the minor role of the vampire named Armin in the movie *Interview with the Vampire*. Do you know how few vampires have this stamina for immortality? 1995 was a very productive year for the actor. More and more pictures with the actor were playing in the theaters. Together with Sylvester Stallone, he starred in the crime thriller *Assassins*. Then appeared in the comedy Four Rooms and played the main roles in the drama Miami Rhapsody and the thriller Never Talk to Strangers. Robert Rodriguez's Western Desperado attracted attention from critics and the audience. I'm looking for a man who calls himself Bucho. That's all. But you had to do it the hard way. The role was considered one of the best works by Banderas in the 90s. And the kiss by Banderas and his co-star Salma Hayek was nominated for the MTV Movie Award for Best Kiss. By the way, the whole film crew gathered at the shooting of the bedroom scene with the main characters, but eventually only the director and script supervisor could stay in the room. It should be noted that Banderas also showed himself as a musician on the set of the picture. The actor played the guitar in all the scenes where this was required of his character. But the next picture, the comedy *Too Much*, did not receive such rave reviews, but became special for the actor. On the set, he met Melanie Griffith. They were both married. Melanie was married to Don Johnson, and Antonio was still married to Anna. Although by that time their relationship had cooled down somewhat, he was actively filming in the United States, and his wife preferred to live in Spain. After working together, the actors sometimes met with each other, and Banderas realized that he had fallen in love. He appeared at a social event together with Melanie. When Anna found out about this, she flew to the United States and found Antonio together with Melanie. They failed to improve the relationship, so the divorce proceedings began. But Anna didn't want to divorce her husband. However, when Antonio and Melanie arrived at the actor's homeland, they were received coldly not only by Banderas' ex-wife and parents, but also by the local media, which presented Melanie as a Home wrecker. One way or another, on May 14, 1996, in London, Antonio married Melody, and a little later, in September of the same year, their daughter Stella Del Carmen Banderas Griffiths was born. By the way, Antonio managed to improve relations with Melanie's daughter from her previous marriage, Dakota Johnson. The married couple had long been considered exemplary. For the sake of her husband, the actress overcame alcohol and drug addiction, and Banderas supported his woman in all endeavors. He tried to dissuade her from plastic surgery and seemed to be an exemplary family man. By the way, it is believed that the actor fell in love with Melanie six years before he had met her. It was when he saw her in the movie Something Wild. In 1996, the musical *Evita* was released, where Banderas worked with Madonna. Playing the lead male role in the movie brought Antonio a Golden Globe nomination and four million dollars in royalties. By the way, as the singer admitted, she had long been very interested in Antonio. Once Madonna invited him to the premiere of a film in which she appeared, but he brought his wife there. 
In 1998, the movie The Mask of Zorro was released, which received high reviews from both critics and viewers. <laughs> to play the role of Alejandro, Antonio spent four months training with the Spanish Olympic fencing team and, according to the coach, became a skilled fencer. For this role, the actor received the Audience Award from the European Film Academy and was nominated for a Golden Globe. Antonio Banderas became one of the biggest stars in Hollywood. Besides acting, he also tried his hand at directing. In 1999, his picture Crazy in Alabama was released, starring his wife Melanie Griffith. The movie was not particularly successful, but it became an important part of the actor's career. In the same year, the action-adventure movie The Thirteenth Warrior was released, in which Antonio played the main role. You, you could have killed him at will. Yes. What? Why the deception? Deception is the point. Any fool can calculate strength. In the same year, together with Woody Harrelson, the actor starred in the sports drama Play It to the Bone and also appeared in the comedy The White River Kid. As his popularity grew, his fees also grew. So for the participation in the movie The Body in 2000, Banderas received $12 million. The following year, Antonio became Angelina Jolie's partner on the set of Original Sin. Liar! Sin! Yes! Yes! Don't you see? Yes! Don't you see? Don't you see I cannot breathe without you? The sensual movie confirmed the title of sex symbols attributed to both actors, and even Jolie had to refute the information about the affair with the Spanish macho man. In the same year, Banderas accepted the invitation from Robert Rodriguez to become a part of the adventure comedy action movie Spy Kids. And later, two more parts of this picture were released. In 2002, Antonio worked with Salma Hayek again on the set of Frida, and also plays the main role in the Franco-Swiss movie, Femme Fatale. The movie of the same year, Ballistic, X vs. Sever, was not a very successful experience. The picture received low ratings. In 2003, a couple of movies with the participation of the Spanish Macho Man were released. At the end of the summer, the sequel to Desperado, The Musician's Story, Once Upon a Time in Mexico, premiered, and in the fall, the drama Imagining Argentina was released. On TV, Banderas played the role of the revolutionary Pancho Villa in the HBO film of the same name. By the way, he received the Emmy and Golden Globe nominations for this role. In 2004, Antonio Banderas voiced Puss in Boots in the animated film Shrek 2. The audience extremely loved the charming and hot-tempered Puss in Boots, who became an integral part of subsequent films about Shrek, both full-length and short. By the way, with his sword, Puss in Boots carves the letter P on a tree with three swings, which is clearly a reference to Zorro. Interestingly, a year after the release of the cartoon, Antonio reappears on the screen in the image of Zorro in the movie The Legend of Zorro. Look, uh, I know what you're thinking, but Elena, Elena, listen, listen. Now, here is me, here is quitting, we're this far apart. It should be noted that the hot Spanish macho man is not only a wonderful actor, but also a musician. He performs his own vocals and films if they are required. For instance, the song from the movie Desperado became a popular hit. Soy un hombre muy honrado, que me gusta lo mejor. In 2005, a star was unveiled in honor of Antonio Banderas on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. However, what goes up must come down. Antonio appeared less and less in Class A films, and in the following years, he appeared less frequently on the screen. In 2006, he starred in the drama Take the Lead. The following year, the actor co-stars with Jennifer Lopez in the crime thriller Border Town, and also takes part in the filming of the comedy My Mom's New Boyfriend. In 2008, Banderas played the role of Ralph in the dramatic thriller The Other Man, and together with Morgan Freeman, starred in the crime thriller Thick as Thieves. Don't even think about it. Think about what? Going anywhere near her. I'll rip your heart out, I mean it. It looks like it's your heart she's not so fond of. In 2009, the actor underwent surgery for a benign tumor in his back and played in several more movies in the next year. 
in 2011, a full-length animated picture about Puss in Boots, voiced by the legendary Macho Man, was released, as well as the adventure drama Black Gold. In the same year, the premiere of the film The Skin I Live In took place. The movie became a kind of reunion of the legendary creative duo of Antonio Banderas and Pedro Almodovar. The psychological thriller turned out to be a masterpiece and has received many awards. In 2012, the actor starred in the action movie Haywire and the fantastic comedy Ruby Sparks. In 2013, Banderas once again engaged in voice acting, this time for the cartoon Justin and the Knights of Valor. He also collaborated again with Rodriguez on the set of Machete Kills and with Almodovar in the comedy I'm So Excited. In 2014, it became public that the wife of the actor, Melanie Griffith, had filed for divorce. The reason she pointed out was that her husband cheated on her with actress Natalie Byrne. They worked together on the set of Expendables 3, but the girl stated that there were no reasons for such accusations, except for Melody's jealousy. The divorce was quite quick and scandalous. The spouses were actively dividing property. They sold the mansion in Los Angeles for $16 million and divided the profits, and also recalculated the income from projects that were implemented during their life together. As a result, Melanie got a house in Aspen and Picasso's painting, The Artist and His Model, and Banderas got a pencil drawing by the same artist along with a pencil sketch by Diego Rivera. In addition, the actor agreed to pay Griffith alimony of $780,000 a year. After the divorce, the actor was credited with a variety of relationships, including with Sharon Stone. Now his girlfriend is the Dutch financier Nicole Kempel, who brought regularity and order to Antonio's life. In subsequent years, Antonio was working in a lot of movies. He starred in the action movie Automata and the biographical drama The 33. He also appeared in the drama Night of Cups, in the Spanish drama Altamira, in the thriller Black Butterfly, and the action movie Security. In 2015, Banderas became interested in fashion and entered the famous British college Central St. Martins. According to the actor, becoming a designer was his lifelong dream. By the way, in 2016, he collaborated with Selected. The actor was the designer of a portfolio for men. Also in 2017, the film's bullet head Acts of Vengeance and the TV show Genius, which tells the story of the legendary Pablo Picasso, were released. For this role, Antonio was nominated for an Emmy and Golden Globe. Shortly before the filming of the show began, the actor had a heart attack. Everything ended well, but Antonio had to seriously revise his lifestyle. He gave up bad habits, began to exercise more often, and monitored his health. In 2018, Antonio starred in the drama Life Itself, and the next year he appeared in the movie Laundromat. He also collaborated with Pedro Amaldivar on the set of Pain and Glory, where the actor played the main role. By the way, this work brought Banderas the long-awaited first nomination for the Oscar, as well as the Golden Globe nomination. In 2020, the actor took part in the filming of Doolittle. I never understood what Lily saw in you. I come and complain to the world over for fathers of beloved daughters, but in this instance, I think we can all agree it is particularly accurate. Now the actor continues to actively play roles in movies. The filming of the comedy drama Official Competition has already been completed. The main roles in the movie are played by Antonio Banderas and Penelope Cruz. For the summer of 2021, the premiere of the comedy action movie with the star cast Hitman's Wife Bodyguard is scheduled. Uncharted starring Tom Holland, Mark Wahlberg, and Antonio Banderas is due out in February 2022. And in the fall of the same year, we will see the new animated picture about the adventures of the charming Puss in Boots. Filmmakers also announced the biographical drama Dali and the fantastic thriller Solos. In both movies, the actor is assigned the main role. Now the fortune of Antonio Banderas is $50 million. In addition to movies, Banderas has repeatedly been an ambassador of world brands, including Orbit. The audience liked the funny commercial in which the actor conducts a dialogue with a donut. 
He also starred in a commercial for Police Eyewear. Also, Antonio Banderas and Olga Kurilenka became ambassadors of the advertising campaign for the new paired fragrances Secret Temptation of the Banderas perfume brand. In general, Banderas is actively involved in the business. Since 1997, he has been producing his Antonio Banderas perfume line. There are already 22 fragrances on the market, 13 for men and 9 for women. Antonio personally gets consulted by perfumers and learns the skill of creating new fragrances from them. In addition, since 2009, the actor has been the owner of a vineyard in Spain. He owns 50% of the Anta Banderas winery in Villalba de Duero, which was originally called Anta Bodegas, and produced up to 1.5 million bottles of wine a year, as well as olive oil. Previously, Banderas was the owner of the Posada de Antonio restaurants, but he gave up this business. Also in 2010, he owned the Jack and Jones by Antonio Banderas team that competed in MotoGP motorcycle races in the Moto2 class. Banderas now supports the Malaga Football Club and the Spanish Socialist Workers Party. Also the actor is involved in charity work and is a UN Goodwill Ambassador. In 2019, he opened a new theater in his hometown, which is designed to seat more than 800 people. Antonio Banderas also owns various properties. During his marriage to Melanie Griffith, he owned a mansion in the elite historic Los Angeles area of Hancock Park. They originally purchased the mansion for $4.2 million in 1999, then bought the adjacent plot for $1.3 million and included it in the estate. The interior of the mansion is designed in a classical style. During the divorce, the estate was put up for sale and just 10 days later it was sold for $16 million. Melanie Griffith got the house in Aspen after the divorce. Located in the mountains, the house is filled with light and comfort. Large panoramic windows, an abundance of wood trim, and decorative details make the rooms lively and comfortable. At first, the ex-spouses planned to sell the house for $10 million, then they leased it, and in the end, they only got $4 million. During the divorce process, Antonio bought out a stake in their New York apartment from Griffith for $4 million. The apartment with the elegant interior is located in a prestigious building. In 2018, the actor put the apartment up for sale, asking for $8 million. In 2014, it was reported that the actor had purchased a penthouse in Malaga. It is said that in the vicinity of Malaga, Terry Molinos, and Ben Almadena alone, the actor acquired seven houses and 14 non-residential properties, including a seaport bar and restaurant. It is known that in 2008, the authorities ordered Banderas to demolish part of the estate called The Seagull, located in Marbella, since the house was built by the former owners without obtaining permits. The actor initiated a legal battle. Banderas now lives in England in a mansion in the county of Tsere. The new acquisition cost him 3.1 million euros. The house has huge windows and beam ceilings. It is filled with light and the actor simply adores the place. He even rides his bicycle in the forest and the surrounding areas. By the way, in the Banderas fleet, besides a bicycle, we can find a Bentley Continental Supersports, Porsche 911, Cabriolet, Audi A7 and even a private jet. What made Antonio Banderas so successful? What do you think? If you like this video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you do not miss anything interesting.